beginning. Love me, love me, love me, say you do. Ding, 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 ding. Let me fly away with you. Ding, 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 ding. For my love is like the wind. Ding, 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 ding. And wild is the wind. Oh, wild is the wind. You touch me. Ding, 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 I hear the sound of mandolins. You kiss me, dang, 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 with your kiss, my life begins. Oh, your spring to me, all frogs to me. Don't you know your frog itself? Welcome to the C.M. Kozunen Frog Extravaganza. Hello everyone, welcome to a new edition of the amazing CM Kozeman Frog Extravaganza. I've lost count of how many episodes it has been. This is either number five or six, but I don't care. We are covering all known species and genera of frogs in the world. And boy, are there a lot of frogs. The last time we were progressing with this thing, we had finished the great clade of Hyloidea, the family, the, the mega group containing tree frogs and all their relatives. And this was a very, very species rich group. So, so there. We will be moving on now with the all frogs clade by clade mega review extravaganza. But before continuing, let me remind you a bit of the house rules here in the frog extended cinematic universe number one rule is please consider playing this podcast at a faster speed it will be better for your mental health it will take you less time and it will make me sound like a cooler guy number two please consider supporting me on patreon.com the link is here and in the video description and in the Pinned command. I got a little fucking bell action going on. Can you hear it? I will now condition you like Pavlovian animals. And whenever I ring the bell, ring the fucking bell icon, you will be reminded to just go and donate to me on Patreon. But all jokes aside, thank you all so much for your support. It really means a lot to me, even if you donate a dollar per month. And even if you are donating, you can also help out by showing your friends or classmates, especially these podcasts, I predict they will be quite popular. So, you know, spread the joy, spread the news. And also consider supporting Atar Prometheum for their contribution to the intro segment at buymeacoffee.com slash Prometheum S. All right, everyone, let's get cracking. Because, boy, are there a lot of frogs to cover. This is just a cursory overview. I mean, I tried to include almost every important group of frogs out there and all, all the charismatic species. But even now, we are at... Okay, the last time we left off, we were at slide number 363 of 650. So let me enter the freaking full screen mode. And let us continue now with the other group known as the Leptodactylidae group. Oh my god, I just realized we haven't even left Hyloidea proper. Well, what can you do? Now we are reviewing the Leptodactylid tree frogs or like basically Leptodactylid frogs. And these are just 
sort of more ground dwelling but remotely tree frog type and also well camouflaged frogs exemplified here by Adalorina perezi of the Leoplerinae subgroup of the Leptodactylidae big family of the Hyloidea mega agglomeration of families. Anyways, this group also has like some tiny and little known frog or tree frog or toad like things such as Angistomops pustulotus means postulated little boy. And once again, you know, I love these like, for example, if you go back, there are th these like very charismatic monkey frogs. They're like very brightly colored and everybody loves them. But I also really like these drab little known weird frogs. And this is basically where 80% of frog diversity lies. And they're always nice to study and look at in further detail. They're like these little things. They're not quite frog nor toad nor tree frog and they're tiny and they're just vibing. And of course, one thing I keep saying again and again in these podcasts is that the category frog or toad or tree frog is completely artificial. There are creatures that look like either of them and they belong to many disparate and disparate families. Moving on, you got Pleurodelma, which is another like small forest dwelling forest species. This genus is pretty diverse and they're notable for their eye spots on their backs and butts. So when they do the butt inflation thing, it looks like a little kind of eye staring at you. Imagine you are like five minutes into watching a, a sexy movie with your significant other and you turn them back and he or she or they give you this look. And you note that notice in terror that they have turned into the back section of a tiny Pleurodema, fro Pleurodema frog. Here's another species, Pleurodema buffonium, no, also with these extra olive-like glands. Ah, this reminds me of Panera bread. Anyways, moving on, there's also the colorfully colored Pleurodema brachiops, which has like these red and blue accents and an overall green color. Really beautiful, beautiful frog. Also, you got some little-known genera in this group too, such as Pseudopaludicola kanga. Not much is known about this guy, except the fact that it has a cool name, kanga. And you notice it's got a big, broad mouth, almost like... And the white coloration extends into its belly, so it almost looks like a, a turtle, almost. Strange, strange guy. Also, you got Pseudopaludicola motorzino. Nice uh, genus name, nice species name. I don't know what, what motorzino means. Maybe it makes a sound like a motorcycle. I should have done this research in depth long ago, but there's so many frogs that we are only skimming through them. Moving on, there's an absolutely tiny banger of a frog, Pseudopaludicola falsipes. Also, just look at this guy. I mean, it's just so tiny. If I'm not mistaken, these are some of the tiniest frogs, frogs out there. And... We can't see very clearly in these pictures, but most frogs, when they get tiny, they lose some of their front digits. So these Pseudopaludicola frogs also do the same, apparently. I mean, these guys, the Pleurodemas, have four or maybe even five hand toes, but these guys have like lower numbers, three or maybe even two, I don't know. Anyways, then you got the extremely, once again, big uh, genus Adenomera, Located in the Leptodactylinae subgroup of the Leptodactylidae family. Remember, these tiny weird ones were all Leopleurinae frogs, but these are Leptodactylinae frogs. And once again, Adonomera is like this like, undergrowth dwelling, small, tiny little frog. Not much is known about them. But they also got like some big frogs here as well, such as Hydrolatare, Schmitti. Kind of like a bullfrog looking customer, but you know, it belongs to an entirely different group. And then you also got the really, really big one, the five fingered Leptodactylus pentadactylus. And it's just amazing. Kind of like a buff, big, eat everything it can see moving kind of frog. Really nice and gnarly. Just look at it. And you know, if you were this close, would you resist the ur urge to pet it? I don't know. Moving on, you got the uh, brightly colored toad-like species, Leptodactylus laticeps. And you got the wheel. <laughs> look at, look, look at 
Okay, I mean, you've seen these like big sort of charismatic frogs, but then look at this guy. It's like someone glued the head of a bigger frog onto the body of a tiny frog. And the head is pointy, so it makes it extra cool. Leptodactylus fuscus. <laughs> I just love this thing. The fact that it can operate and survive is, is just wonderful. Wonderful. I wonder if pointy noses versus smooth noses have like some difference in dietary choice. I don't know. Maybe pointy noses are, noses are for smaller prey, but I don't know. And then you got this, once again, this group also has smaller frogs too. They do a psych kind of surprise and you got Lithodites, Lineatus, smaller versions of these big weird guys, but quite distinct from, quite distinct from those small warty guys. So, so there. Moving on, this guy is extra special, by the way, this Lithodites Lineatus frog, because these guys live in, in South America, okay? And South America is home to big jungles, and in these jungles there are very uh, terrifying insects. One of them is the very famous leafcutter ant. Now, these ants are gigantic. They're like these <laughs> starship troopers kind of ants. And they're also unique for having invented farming millions of years before humans did. So what they do is they like cut all these leaves with their enormous heads and then carry them to underground chambers where they raise and eat and they only eat a kind of fungus. Like it's very distinct because this fungus is found nowhere else in the world aside from the nests of these leafcutter at atta ants. Now, as you might know, ant nests have many, many interesting creatures living in them. They're also like beetles and strange mites that are found nowhere else. And especially for these like extremely complex nest builders, it's believed that like some of these little commensal insects are somehow like extremely specialized to live with the ants. And they're almost like their pets or commensals. Like they got like some quite drastic specializations and Heck, maybe one day we can do an entire video about amazing ant commensals. And they're just weird. What's interesting about this guy, Lithodites, is that it is also an ant nest commensal, but it's an amphibian. What these guys do is they use the nests of these leafcutter ants as active breeding sites. Here's the paper that describes this process. So these guys get into this nest defended by these gigantic and terrifying ants. I mean, if it was any other frog, they would tear them apart, you know, like... But anyways, what they do is... Imagine this, like... They're swimming in mud, developing, growing thriving, living their best life, attended by these gigantic killer psycho fungus farming ants. And I guess maybe these frogs can also develop in other environments, but apparently they thrive here, and it's just very humbling to see a kind of backboned animal. Res remember some frogs, they're like little monkeys, they're like very easy to relate to as fellow vertebrates, but these guys have become simps in the nest of an ant. And it's like, I mean, every time people ask me, like, how do you come up with some of your crazy, weird alien stories? And you may not know, but I also write about weird alien takeovers and future human evolution in uh, unrelated and little-known series of science fiction stories. Anyways, what I do is it's very easy. Just look at uh, some of these natural interactions and then just personify the animals. I mean, imagine the humans are ants and maybe you have farms, but in these farms there's a kind of commensal animal that's actually an alien species. You could sort of flip the thing and imagine like humans breeding in the nests of an alien insect and that's just wow. What's really interesting oops, about this species and this interaction is that these guys also, like these tadpoles seem to like eat something in this nest but the scientists aren't able to determine what like do they eat the fungus do they just eat the mud or like do the ants have some waste product that they metabolize i don't know but it's just i mean fascinating and this image is like really like worthwhile here are the here are the ants 
going about, here's the wet mud, and here are the tadpoles just swimming about. And when they mature and turn into these guys, they're like, ha, I had some wild times when I was a youngster. But anyways, moving on, uh, we have arrived at the Paratelmatobinae subgroup of the leptodactylid frogs, exemplified here once again by another little-known brown small tree frog-like customer. This is uh, Crossodactylodes serpentrionalis, a really, really beautiful, beautiful, tropical, strange, little-known South American frog. Uh, this whole genus is, uh, this whole group is very diverse. You have also Paratelmatobius, a widespread uh, genus with many species. They can be big or small. They can be brightly colored as well as drably colored. And most of them have like these bright splashes of color in their underbellies. They do this kind of freezing and flipping motion if you disturb them. So they kind of like let everyone know that they're maybe poisonous. I don't know. And then moving on, you got this related genus called Rupariana. It's Rupert! Rupert! Looking at us from his stony habitat. Uh, this like wonderfully subtly colored arms. Beautiful. And then you got another species, Scytophrys, which is another genus, Scytophrys, which is another small frog surprise. But this guy somehow mimics like dried leaf or something like this. I really love it when they have this kind of like wine colored gradation be be below the eyes and the rest of the body is like crunchy cookie colored it's it's just beautiful and note how the skin folds arrange themselves triangularly it's almost like a stylized drawing you know some sort of computer game art kind of shit but anyways this is Skitophrys saviae and then you got in this group one mystery species and genus it was recorded once uh, during the early 20th century by Adolfo Lutz, a Brazilian pioneering herpetologist. We call it Leptodactylus in quotes because no one really knows what these guys were, but these were recorded somewhere cl close to Brazil and they were never seen again. Which is quite drastic and, and a sad tale because it probably means they've become extinct. And these little, little drab and unassuming frogs there must be hundreds of hundreds of species out of them. And if you've been watching these shows, you'll know that they belong to some really diverse families. I mean, in your hand, you could hold 10 frogs and each frog could come from a different family. That's how diverse they are. They would all be like brownish, drab, small, unassuming, but they have like these amazing natural histories and, and amazing genetic diversity. So it's all the more reason to value them. Scytophrys, and then moving on to quote-unquote, the forgotten Leptodactylus. Now, please, I want you to press F to pay your respects. I am waiting. Press F in the comments section. So you get some... Let's, let's get some interaction out of this bitch. Okay, moving on. Oops. Ha! Huh. Then we have moved on to a new family, the Odontophirnidae group. The Odontophirnidae family. These are once again, surprise, little known, kind of like Pac-Man frog type frogs, exemplified here by Macrogenioglottus alipioi, which has a kind of bulldog-like short face, which means it kind of like stuffs its face in, and it's wonderfully camouflaged. It's even got these bloody colors. Maybe it's as a warning sign. And it's got this lovely like chocolate spiny pustules here, and this kind of like forearm wart action going on really beautiful creature i wonder like a lot of you guys new generation guys a lot of you zoomers are really great at 3d modeling so maybe if you want like a pet project to occupy you for the rest of your fucking lives you could try 3d modeling these low polygon versions of all these frogs they really, really lend themselves well well to a sort of low polygon design and their colors are just beautiful i mean i would really enjoy texturing these models if i could do anything with 3d but i can't so i have to make these podcasts anyways moving on you also have this boy chunky shy mud turtleneck globster man odontophrinus carvaloi he is total introvert once he stayed home for five days and in this five days in three days 
He didn't even take a shower. Just look at this guy. What was he doing in there? What's going on in this mind of his? He's building a machine. Look at this. He's, he's an absolute machine, a unit. Oh my God. And there are also other species in the genus Odontophrenus. And when they're not burrowing underground like total introverts, they actually look like this. They look like more chunkier and approachable and kissable and presentable. Ah, I give this frog a big kiss. Hope it doesn't turn into a prince or a princess. Because I'm already taken. <sighs> there are also days I looked like this guy too. Anyways, moving on. Then in this group you got the horn chonking uh, predator burrow frogs. Exemplified here by Proceratophrys. Boy eye. The name reminds me of Proceratosaurus, which was a vicious, vicious predatory dinosaur. This guy is a vicious, vicious predatory frog, and it's got these record breaking, almost like antler like flesh horns. This is a pretty small guy, so the skin folds can grow quite big. And if you look at th these guys' skeletons, they don't have anything to reflect on these spikes, it's just flesh. But it's just got these really nice, snappy angles. But here it turns into some tubercles and just just beautiful. This is why I think these frogs are really great for a low polygon 3D render art project. You don't have to do them all. Just do 10 or 12 or 50 and it will be a really nice graduation project. If you're studying arts or design, this is a neat, neat example. And your raw material is right here with this podcast. If you support me on Patreon, you can also download these slides and have an easier time referencing these frogs. Here's a related species, Pros Proceratophrys itamari. Once again, beautifully camouflaged. Looks like some sort of East European uh, boiled, uh, boiled dough dish that I never heard of, but I desperately need. I also wonder if the eyes are somehow like a mimic on uh, pit vipers or eyelash vipers, which also inhabit these regions, but I don't know, but this is what this guy looks like. Also examine that this is probably a male, and most toads, especially males, or most frogs, have these like gnarly grip action going on in their hands. Let me just zoom in. This is so that they can better grab their females when they're mating and they go... Anyways, then you got the absolute chongin, red, Chicago Bulls fan, absolute chunk unit of a man. Proceratophrys brownie and I'm not even gonna try to describe it it's just so beautiful these colors ah and it's amazing how the kind of fingers and toes kind of grade into pustules they become one so you don't know if this is a word or an actual digit this is probably the last digit but then the words begin and the way you can't tell them apart is just titillating moving on you got the more like <laughs> beautifully colored Proceratophrys moratoi, once again, an absolutely wholesome looking, soft baked, chongin customer with these like almost feather like warts. I just like these warts for some reason. They're beautiful. In some other toads, they're very irregular and they give like this messy appearance. But in these guys, the warts are actually very regular. So they satisfy something in my OCD mind. And if you look closer, these spots, they're not actually random. They're like green encircled by bands of white uh, on a background of yellowish brown. So beautiful. And then we move on to the next family. The I think these are called gastric breeding frogs. No, they're called Darwin's frogs because Darwin was the first one to describe them. I don't know. These are a related family, but they're a distinct family. Rhinodermatidae. Exemplified here by Rhinoderma darwini. Now these guys, the males, also incubate their tadpoles in their throat sacs sometimes. And if you go to the way, way earlier episodes of this amazing cinematic universe saga, you would know that there are also, there are also other gastric brooding frogs. Oh, I wonder if we can find the slide again. Let me just take a peek. These are some of our earliest slides. Uh, there was like a press F to pay your respects kind of thing. 
Okay, now we're committed. Yeah, I have to find this thing. Where is it? Oh, no. I know I kind of broke the flow, but what can I do? Move, 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 move. I've been watching that amazing film, Uncut Gems. And at the, dam at the end, there's a goddamn banger of a soundtrack. Oh, my God. We've really moved on, haven't we? Okay, this is the this is the other guy. Press F to pay your respects for Reobatracus, the extinct gastric breeding frog in Australia. I believe this is what they look like. They also incubated their tadpoles in their throats, and the dad would vomit, and a little bimbi came out. Unfortunately, these guys are extinct. But anyways, moving on. We were at slide 380 some shit. Wonder if I can find it. Oh my god, where are we? I'm getting old. Okay, here we are. Because these guys also do a similar thing, but I want you to note that how this thing evolved quite independently. And these guys are also beautiful. They are got these like tiny little blappy, spiky snouts, and they also have some remnants of this like angular wart action going on in their elbows. Beautiful. Also, the green color is like to die for these are actually very variable some are green some are brown some have this like wiper skin collection coloration if this was a game you would probably have to pay like 20 extra dollars to get the green coloration green skin and if you look closely at these illustrations this is how they launch their bimbies basically they yawn and do a kind of vomiting action and the bimbi just drops out Quite unlike humans, in which the boomer parents actually devour their parent, their offspring, and consume everything, and leave nothing for them to inherit. Okay, back to full screen, back to life. Okay, in this group you also have Insuetofrinus, which is a related genus, and this is just like again another smooth, mostly aquatic stream living frog. Not much is known about it. And then you got the amazing Telmatobidae family. Now, remember, this is a very distinct, di distinct group. It's an entire family. It contains this, like, amazing few species of frogs which really have unusual and extraordinary adaptations. Number one, they have forward-facing eyes, kind of like the eyes of a seal, actually. I mean, it's very weird, but this is the closest I could find in nature. If you just Google... Wait a minute. If you just Google the face of a seal. Oh my god, I hope I hope they don't see my search history with the word face in it. <laughs> Who could have searched for that? Anyways, we are looking at seal faces now. Okay, if you look at seals' faces, they got forward facing eyes, and that's what makes them so cute actually. I mean just look at this guy. And tell me, look at this guy, and tell me you hadn't seen this face before. Let me just quit this. Here, it's the same face architecture. Amazing. So, I don't know whether, uh, maybe they use it to catch fish, because these are like almost purely aquatic frogs. That's also very interesting about them. And because they spend most of their life underwater, they have this kind of, extremely loose fitting uh, of uh, for the lack of a better word foreskin like uh, skin which is very floppy and loose and this actually helps them absorb oxygen directly from the water also these guys live in some of the most oxygen rich waters in the world this is the lake titicaca frog now lake Tit lake lake titicaca is a very very weird place it's um it's one of the highest bodies of freshwater in the world it's located in the andes mountains in south america correct me if i'm wrong and there are even like it's also has like a unique kind of ecology and there are even like what amounts to biological urban legends about a species of freshwater seahorse living in lake titicaca now this is very interesting because seahorse are like purely marine fish 
Okay, some of their species enter mangrove forests, but that doesn't really count because mangrove forests, I mean, they're kind of fresh to brackish water, but they're next to the sea. Now, I haven't been able to verify this. Maybe it's an urban legend, but if there really is a species of seahorse living in Lake Titicaca, it's a very extraordinary occurrence. And even if you don't have sea for horses, you also, at, at least you have these amazing guys, which I just love and adore. These loose-skinned Nirvana album cover guys. These little Cheetos guys, badly drawn guys, just swimming about and vibing with their forward-facing faces and living their best life. This entire family contains only a few species, such as the related Telmatobius marmoratus, which is has a similar anatomy, similar forward-facing eye structure. Also, sea snakes have similar... Some of them have these forward-facing eyes, so that's also very interesting. And But it doesn't have a loose foreskin thing, so it's kind of like maybe slightly more terrestrial. I don't know. And then you got the best named of them all, Telmatobius dankoi, named after its dank face and its dank meme potential. Now, I want you to screenshot this image, print it on a t-shirt and wear it for me and send a picture. If you do that, I will share it with all 36,000 people watching this channel and it will be just be the best thing. Do it! Take a screenshot. Now, I'm counting it. Then go to your local t-shirt place, local Kinko's, local copy shop, and then ask them to print it on a t-shirt. You'll thank me later when hundreds upon hundreds of your preferred oppositor same-sex come and throw themselves at your feet because you're so dripping. What can I say? And that's all thanks to this dank freshwater frog, Talmatobius dankoi. You also have this guy, Talmatobius yurakare, which is also either another freshwater frog, distinguished by its kind of orange underbelly, and it's like samurai-like graceful movements. And this was only known from a certain region in Bolivia, and... I mean, maybe it's even extinct in the wild. No one really knows. But for the last 10 years, there was one specimen known and kept alive in an aquarium in Bolivia. Now, after a remote expedition in a cloud forest, scientists have found a, a mate for this lonely Romeo frog. And these are called Senuecas water frogs. And it's a, an auspicious omen that now these guys can mate again and they can once again reproduce. At least this 10 guy, isolated guy, can finally get some honking chonking going. And you know, with flesh pads like this lining his thumb, you know he's never gonna let go. He's just gonna hold it and choke him for dear life until they say the safe word. Okay, moving on. Oh my God, ah, ah. this is it, man. This is it, boys and girls, everyone. We reached the end of the Hyloidea mega, mega group. And you know, this took like almost two or three entire videos to cover. Looking back, let's do a fast rewind. This entire, like, focus on this part of the text, okay? Focus here. View, full screen. It never changes. Check, take a look. Never Hyloidea, 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 Hyloidea. Still going strong, all these guys, all these guys, all these guys. Oh, look at these, like, helmet-faced guys. It's so big that attempting to scroll through it is probably going to fry my computer now. Tree frogs, other frogs, weird frogs, kinky frogs, chunk girls, and it's just so freaking big, this group. Anyways, moving on. So it took us from, like, page... 270 something something until oh, oh. <laughs> why am I not going it took us wow nearly 200 slides to go through this group hi Lloyd there and this is why like you know ignore all my jokes and like spicy comments and unhinged cringe edgelord jokes but Really, like the diversity of nature is really humbling. And if you're looking for a career 
in maybe the sciences, consider studying zoology and maybe study one of these animal groups in detail. These animals are so diverse that literally one person cannot know about the entire group, even if he or she was like some Warhammer genetically augmented dude or gal or whatever. You really need specialists in this field. And if you enjoy these things, please consider a career. And if you choose one because of me, let me know about it because it makes me very proud. Anyways, we have moved on. Can you believe that? We moved on to the Soglosoidea group. Okay. This is uh, like in terms of cladistics and genetics, it's a very distinct group, but it's not as diverse as some of the other groups. But it contains some of the most honking, chonking frogs out there. Exemplified by Nazica batracus, Sahiadrensis. This is an Indian burrowing frog, and this was named only in 2003. So this entire clade was formally, let's say, collated only in the early 21st century. And you know, you've probably seen this frog as a meme somewhere or the other. It's a very distinct, specialized frog. Now, if you look at the earlier episodes, and I'm not even going to scroll back there, but there are many other frogs that kind of look like this. There's one species in Mexico. There are also like these wet, uh, fleshy mammy guys living in Australia. And there are also rain frogs and these other sad frogs, whatever. They also all look kind of clunky and flabby and just ridiculous. And the reason is this look is actually here for a specific reason. They burrow. And in order to burrow, they need to have loose skin and not as many warts so that the breed doesn't get caught in them. And so that's they're built this way for a purpose. And they're just really beautiful. And look at this. This could be us, but you playing. Just look at this. They're just enjoying. They're enjoying life so well. They're just, ah, they're just vibing. And there are many misadventures. Like if you Google these animals' photographs, there's even like an unfortunate photo where this guy, this gal, is being assaulted by these uh, sex-crazy golden frogs. They just want to get it on with anything that swims and looks like a frog. And she was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And it's also amazing how like quite big they are. I mean, this is almost the size of an uncooked chicken. Which is extraordinary because these toads also are quite large. And when I first saw these images, I thought maybe it's like a small weird frog. But no, it's actually quite big and chunking. But they can also be small. Big and small. And it is widely believed that a group of three of these frogs is responsible for um, ruling uh, the world in secret in the Illuminati pyramid, which is buried under the sands of the... Uh, Egyptian plateau but it's connected to India by these lost underground tunnels of the subterrestrial civilization of Agartha and of course I'm just joking but you know if you get me drunk enough I could just look at these frogs and tell you all sorts of weird surreal adventures about them and they're just <laughs> I mean I, did you know this frog was single-handedly responsible for uh, developing the hydrogen bomb? I don't think you did. Anyways, their tadpoles are quite weird too. Like, these are either uh, tadpoles of a different species, but these guys' tadpoles, they're like, they're like this weird, enormous Star Wars ship that kind of, <laughs> like, hoovering things up. No, they start weird, they stay weird. These awesome, awesome guys, and this is just a classic image. Ah, unbelievable. I mean, I could just talk about them for hours. This growth here is not remarkable because it actually helps them burrow into the mud, moving backwards, so everything is there for a reason. And then in this group, somehow, you also have the little-known Seychelles Islands frogs. Now, these are like a very distinct but outwardly unassuming-looking group. So this entire group, the Sogol Soglosoidea group, is kind of linked genetically with these frogs. So maybe these chonkin chonkin boys are remnants of these smaller boys who somehow migrated to the Indian subcontinent and became honkin chonkin there, but we don't really know. Maybe they're distant relatives, but anyways, these are the these are the proper soglosid 
Seychelles Islands frog, exemplified here by Soglossus seychellensis, seychellensis. And they look more ordinary, but they're also tiny. And some of these guys are, are actually the tiniest frogs in the world. Seychellophrin and Seychellophrin grand gardineri is actually one of the smallest living frogs in the world. The top length apparently is 11 millimeters long. So it's a top G! Top G is being taken to jail for operating an illegal egg tadpole ring. Anyways, moving on. That's it. That's it. This was the Seychelles Islands frogs, the Chong and Fongin burrowing frogs, conspiracy theory frogs, and that's all. That was it for this entire clade. Soglosoidea. Now we will be moving on to the Gblik Ranoidea group. But if you notice these little numbers here, we're at page 4. 400 of 600 so Ranoidea is also another enormous group and I'm just tapped out for the night so I'm gonna be recording that in the next episode so thank you for staying with me so far and enduring my tasteless jokes and my weird humor and I hope you enjoyed this frog section please uh, say something in the comment section so that the algorithm gets a going and I wish you all a great day night or afternoon wherever you are in the world also consider supporting me on patreon all right see you in the next episode frog people see you and goodbye